I start with the head of the rebreather with its uh, three oxygen sensors, which I ensure are uh, pinned down. Then I fasten the separator plate that ensures the separation between the oxygen and the uh, carbon dioxide loop parts. The next thing I do is I fill one third of the scrubber bucket with softener lime and start tapping. As you see, tapping will be something that you will get accustomed to. So you tap it to compress it to ensure that there is no CO2 channeling taking place. Now comes the second third. As you see, I'm, I'm wasting quite a lot of softener lime on the floor. Uh, that improved over time. I'm blowing a bit uh, some of the dust away. It shouldn't be too dusty. And again, compacting the scrubber. And now comes the final third. I'll fill up the scrubber until you get until to about the, the lower uh, screw that you'll see on the scrubber bucket. And again, tapping on it to compact it. With that completed, I put the, the sieve on it, that's like a mesh, it's made out of metal, it's quite rugged, and that closes the, the scrubber. Uh, that will be the, the bottom side, by the way, once it's put on, now comes a spring that ensures that the whole thing remains under tension. And as I'm screwing it, it on, I'm, I'm checking it, and I'm also checking it orally to see that uh, it's compact enough. Using my checklist, I continue assembling the unit. This is the counter lung. The SF2 has a counter lung like a PSCR. It actually uh, started off as a PSCR rebreather that makes it quite well suited for rugged diving and cave diving and things like that because it's quite streamlined. The next thing is as you seal the scrubber bucket is upside down and is now lowered onto the, the unit and fitted uh, onto it. Make sure that the o-ring at the top of the scrubber is, is not damaged. This is a critical item. Now comes another carbon fiber piece protecting the scrubber bucket and that is also pushed down into place and finally uh, I'm putting on the, the head of the rebreather with all the electronics uh, and the three oxygen sensors and since there's a big o-ring I'm especially careful on how I push this down to ensure that this is really settling down nice, nice and tight. And don't forget to uh, fasten down the, the two clamps. Uh, people who tend to forget that. If you're lucky, it will be just an embarrassing thing. If not, it might actually be quite dangerous. With the fast locks, we uh, attach the cylinders. First the, the oxygen, that's the one I did first, and now the diluent cylinder. In this case, in Europe, it's three liters. I'm not sure what the, our American friends are using. And now what I do is I usually uh, secure the, the driving computer, the main computer and the backup computer to these three liter bottles facing inward towards the back plate. Now I'm attaching the, the injectors. This is the oxygen part of the injector. Now I'm attaching the first stage of the diluent and the diluent automatic diluent valve injector. With that completed, I'll put the unit on a, on a ladder. I find it easier to work on it and also to, to, to also mount it, to don it, once the, the unit is completely configured. The next thing is uh, calibrating the sensors. There's a calibration hose that is now attached to the right 
support of the head, as you see. I uh, let the oxygen flow and now go through the calibration procedure, which unfortunately is not that well uh, displayed because there was a, a lot of sun around. But essentially, you might see that the calibration is complete now. I do the same thing for the backup computer. Also calibrate that one. And that's done as well. Now I remove the calibration hose and attach this oxygen hose directly to the, to the head where it will deliver oxygen to the solenoid valve. I check the valves of the, that's the mushroom valves of the bailout valve and using bayonet attachments attach the cooper hoses both of these, the Cooper hoses and the bailout valve, are aftermarket things, but they are quite well respected and they're well used throughout the industry, also with other rebreathers. Now that was the under pressure and the over pressure check of the loop itself. With that being completed, I attach the loop to the unit. And this is the, the hose that will supply bailout, onboard bailout diluent to the second stage of the bailout valve. This is an emergency uh, apparatus that will drive uh, bailout for a few seconds by just switching the unit at the mouthpiece from closed circuit to open circuit uh, so that there is time to, to de-stow and actually use the offboard bailout. Final thing is the, the organ bottle that I'm putting. It's actually the second to final thing. The final thing is the, the, the lamp, the tank lamp that is being attached now. With that being completed, the next thing to do is the overpressure and under pressure check of the whole unit that checks whether the unit is tight or has any leaks, or whether there are any O-rings and things not working. And what I do now is I'm closing the overpressure valve at the bottom of the counter lung, and I've just added manually uh, diluent to inflate the counter lung. Two minutes later, I'm checking that the counter lung is still full and opening the overpressure valve, pushing it inside. And now the next check is to see whether the automatic diluent valve is firing uh, at minimum loop. That being completed, I now close the, the first stage of the diluent uh, and start drawing air from the loop and creating a vacuum, closing again the bailout valve. Two minutes later, I'm arriving here and checking whether the vacuum has held. I listen and I heard and also I visually expected that that was the case. Now with that being completed, um, I'm again using the checklist, checking that the shutoffs are in the open position.